Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Underwater power cables have been used for decades to provide much needed electrical energy and telecommunications connection to islands, remote places, offshore platforms, and other areas with no on-site power sources. Nowadays, with the advent of offshore wind farms and other natural energy plants, many of these cables also move in the other direction, bringing power and energy from the seas. As might be expected, these cables are of very high standards, not just for handling this amount of power, but also to withstand the many threats presented by the ocean floor. From the conductors to the insulation and armoring processes, these cables are truly a masterpiece of advanced technology. This advancement has also led to an enormous increase in prices, with many of the cable designs costing as much as $400 per foot. When you consider the hundreds of thousands of miles of these cables currently crisscrossing the global seafloor, it's not hard to see the massive investment both private and public organizations are putting in the transportation and distribution of energy. In the past, you may have needed the two cables. Now you can do it in one, with one cable, the same power. That means it's much more cost efficient uh, and of course, uh, the whole installation around it, uh, the civil construction work will be uh, more cost effective. The manufacturing process of these powerful submarine cables vary widely depending on the voltage to be carried and the distance that needs to be traversed. The cross-section of each cable reveals high-quality cables inside layers of galvanized steel. A plastic tube, copper sheath, and a small quantity of petroleum jelly. Around that, a protective copper or aluminum tube is installed. The remaining components are all directed towards protecting and shaping the cable. They include a lead or aluminum water barrier, stranded steel wires, mylar tape, and a final wrap of polythylene to protect the entire cable from damage and corrosion. To more easily facilitate the installation of the cable, most manufacturing facilities position the cable directly onto large metal rollers, which can be directly transferred onto the laying vessels. To connect individual offshore units, these special cable laying vessels first do an underwater inspection of the laying path to ensure there are no barriers. This is done using a remotely operated underwater vehicle, or ROUV, which makes contact with the pre-installed messenger wire on the offshore unit. This messenger wire is then pulled aboard and connected to the cable head. The cable can now be deployed very slowly, with the ROUV checking each section as it makes contact with the bottom. As the cable is laid, workers indicate precisely where it needs to be cut, and the process is repeated at the opposite end. A special remote-controlled trench robot is then deployed to bury the freshly laid length of cable. 
Due to their robustness, underwater cables have a lifespan of up to 25 years. When a cable is retired, it can remain inactive on the ocean floor or retrieved for recycling. Once they are decommissioned and removed from the ocean, they are processed at a special recycling plant. First, the cables are cut into manageable sections, usually around two or three feet long. They are then fed into a special machine that cuts the cable open, revealing each component. The insulation is stripped away and the vital metal and electronic sections are piled up for reuse. These old cables still contain millions of dollars worth of material that can be reused many times over for diverse purposes. Despite all the impressive technology that goes into cable manufacture today, underwater cables have actually been around for over 150 years. Indeed, the very first transatlantic telegraph cable was laid between 1854 to 1858 and was capable of sending entire messages in a matter of minutes from Ireland to Newfoundland. Of course, back then, these cables were laid haphazardly by slow-moving steamships. Today, the job is done by specialized vessels with unique rotary sections for cable storage and deployment. They are also built with special mooring systems and flat bottoms, which enable them to reduce motion when operating in both shallow and deep water. The interior of these unique vessels is equally intriguing. The most notable is the way the entire center of the ship is dedicated to the cable laying process. With thousands of feet of tether for the ROUVs, in addition to the underwater cables, vast sections of the ship are completely dedicated to storage space. There are also specially equipped sections from which the movements of the ship, cable laying devices, and ROUVs can be coordinated via remote control. As we continue to see an increase in the demand for offshore power, no doubt these massive cable laying vessels will become a more frequent sight on oceans and lakes all around the world. However, this process is still susceptible to a variety of unique challenges and problems. To reduce some of these dangers, the seabed is plowed and the cables buried. Fishing vessels and anchoring ships still remain a danger to even the most insulated cable designs. A single disturbance or one misplaced anchor and entire island nations could lose power and communications for days at a time. There have been reports of sharks and other marine predators biting the undersea cables, potentially putting holes in the insulation that may lead to corrosion down the line. Since repairing the cable involves dredging up the damaged section and carefully replacing it at sea, one can only hope technology will find a way to render these threats far less damaging. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.